So Ian, um, I've got a couple of questions for you. All you have to do is uh, uh, whatever comes in to your head first. Actually, maybe that's not a great idea. Really. Um, Second, and I'm a little bit so, worried about this. So, question one. Uh, what was your first traditional folk or accordion album or single that you bought with your own money? Um, the first traditional folk album that I ever bought with my own money was Capper Cayley. Ah. Crosswinds, I think ah. it was called. Yeah. There you go. That was the first one. That was the first thing that came into my head and it was clean. Um, okay, second question coming up. Can you think of the most life-changing uh, live music concert or traditional festival uh, that you've ever been to, attended? So well, um, uh, you're expecting me to say some kind of uh, fantastic folk act at this point, don't you? Not but actually, um, I went to Castle Donington to the Monsters of Rock Festival, and that's probably been the most influential festival that I've been to. You've been a monster Whitesnake. of rock since? I have, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should just come with so one what, of these accordions. What year was that, do you think? Oh, let me think, that would have been about 16, so 16 or 17. And now. 1950. I'm 25, so <laughs> that long ago, yeah. 50. Okay, question three. Um, deep down, are you a teacher or a performer? Uh, I'm a teacher. Deep uh, down, I'm that's a teacher. Good news for you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I've devote, I've um, I've given up um, touring and all that kind of stuff to to teach. Right. But um, uh, not my it, well half my job now is teaching kids with additional learning, as you know. So that's really where my real passion is at the minute. You know, but um, uh, here I've got a a whole class of accordionists here, yeah. and my mother sitting at the piano. <laughs> so, uh, so obviously well, teaching the accordion is. Yep. In, in your opinion, what percentage of the population is truly tone deaf? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, if you're, um, there's certainly the younger generation, I think they're all tone deaf. But, um, <laughs> as uh, we've been discussing um, um, this weekend, you know, um, as you get older, then you start to appreciate music more, listen to it a diff in a different way. So I think, um, you know, the older generation certainly, maybe. The, uh, the, the actual scientific uh, 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 word for being tone deaf is called amusia. And, uh, and, uh, no, uh, and the current uh, scientific American is about 3% of the population actually ha suffer from this inability to hear or recognise pitch. But the rest of us, are actually, it's all there. All we have to do is actually kind of find it and, and understand the idea of tone and That's pitch. interesting. I remember when I was um, at school, we had to do sight singing. You know, so they give you a piece of music and you've got to try and sing it. Um, they te try and teach it with do, re, mi and all that mm. stuff. But um, I could, in my head, I could see what was supposed to be there. But see, trying to reproduce it mm -hmm. with my voice, I just couldn't do it. And uh, when it came to my actual exam, um, they said, well, you can make any noise you like as long as you reproduce the notes that are on the page in the order that they're on the page. So I farted my way through. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I whistled my way through my higher music exam. There you go. <laughs> oh, that's going to be on the tape, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. OK, question number five, the final okay. question. OK. Um, if you had to choose a favourite, uh, would it be an air, a march, a straspe, a jig or a reel? Uh, as a type of tune? Yeah, as a type of tune. Well, when I was younger I would have probably said a reel. Right. Um, now I'm probably getting to that age where an air would probably be my favourite. I've uh, actually recently been trying to compile a lot of my tunes and I hadn't realised that the majority of them are actually airs and waltzes. Ah, there you go. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, not reels. I had suspected that there would be mostly reels and jigs, but great. Thank you very much. That's it. Yeah, that's the question. Over. No, why don't we play a tune? Yeah. Um, so, you want to set this? Tune yeah. Up? So this tune, um, um, it's I don't know what it is. Whether it's a march or a kind of airy kind of march, it's. Difficult. I haven't just asked that question. I can't really describe what kind of tune this is. Anyway, this is um, a tune called Freya Balfour, written for 
um, a lass in Shetland whose name is Freya Balfour. How about that? <laughs> yep. I wrote a tune yeah. years ago for her sister, um, and then it took me years and years later before I got into this one. But I'd, last year I had to go to Shetland and she was going to be there, so I thought, well, I better, <laughs> better have a tune as well. So yeah. here it is. Well, here. Freya Balfour. Let's and then at the off. end, this is a test for you guys. You can tell us what kind of tune it is. Yep. Yeah. Okay, here we go.